In this lesson, we'll learn about the print and cut process, taking a print off your printer, and having the FC2250 contour cut around the images on the print. This application can apply to make decals and full color packaging designs. This lesson will cover how to make a contour cut path, how to use layers effectively for this process, show why registration marks are needed and how to create them, and the steps required to contour cut the print. The software that we're going to be using in this lesson is Cutting Master 2 with Adobe Illustrator CS6. While this may not be the software combination you're using, you'll find that the steps are similar to other software applications. Whatever software you are using, review the manual or instructional video supplied with the software for further information. The first step to the print and cut process is to create the cut path. Keep in mind that the cut path should be created after the design of the image is complete. A cut path can be any shape with a thin line and no fill. In many cases though, a design is best suited with a cut path that contours the shape. For instance, here we have a design that could use a circle or oval, but as you can see it has unnecessary white space around the image. This design would be best suited for a cut path that contours the design. Here in Adobe Illustrator, the first step is to select all the objects in the design. Click on the Object pull-down menu, hover the mouse over Path, and select Offset Path. When the Offset Path window appears, enter the distance or margin between the graphic and the cut path. By enabling Preview, it can be determined how the outline or offset path will look. It looks a little messy right now, but this will be taken care of in a minute. We can also set how the corners will look. For instance, we may want to have the corners rounded a little. We can click OK to set the path. Next, click on the Window pull-down menu, and make sure the Pathfinder palette is open. Click on the first button, Unite. From here, it's a matter of making sure the cut path has no fill and there is a stroke line. To distinguish it from the rest of the design, the stroke color can be changed to red or some other color not used in the design. If you need to remove the holes inside the new outline, first release the compound. Hold the shift key and click on the outline. Delete the smaller objects inside by pressing the delete key. Take note that while any shape can be used as the cut line, the only thing we suggest is to not use part of the design as your cut path. This can create difficulties. In cases where you want the cut path to be right on the edge, create a separate outline and enter zero for the distance, and then bleed out the design beyond the cut path. This will remove any chance of a sliver of white space occurring. The next step is to separate out the cut path from the rest of the design using the Layers palette. First, make sure the Layers palette is open. Next, create two layers. One layer that contains objects for printing, and a second layer that contains the cut path. We'll label the first layer as the Print layer, and the second as the cut layer. Now we can assign the cut path to the cut layer by clicking on the cut path and dragging this dot to the cut layer. This will assign the cut path to that layer. To check this we can turn off the print layer and this should leave the cut path. In order for the cutter to follow the cut path accurately, Registration marks have to be placed on the design. Registration marks provide information to help the cutter map out the cut path accurately. Once they are scanned by the registration mark scanner, the marks provide information to the cutter such as the starting point, the angle, and distortions. Since Cutting Master 2 is a plug-in module for Adobe Illustrator, it can create and correctly place registration marks directly within Adobe Illustrator or Corel Draw. 
This is done by clicking on the File pull-down menu, hover the mouse over Cutting Master 2, and then select Registration Marks. This brings up this window. At the top, we have the choice of registration mark styles. Let's take a few minutes and go over the different registration mark styles and their purpose. There are essentially two main types of registration marks, Type 1 and Type 2. The differences are very simple. With Type 1, the registration mark corners are facing inward. And with Type 2, the registration mark corners are facing outward. Typically, Type 2 is generally best since this allows for extra area to your design, but the choice is up to you. These registration marks are placed on the four corners of the design, just outside the cut line. Segmented registration marks are primarily for long print jobs and are not used too much with the FC2250 flatbed. These are the intermediate registration marks that look like little T's between the four corner registration marks. They can also be used by the cutter to determine if any bowing has occurred during the printing process. Now that we understand a little more about registration marks, let's examine the different pattern choices that Cutting Master 2 offers by clicking on this pull-down list. Here we are given several choices. The standard styles are the GraphTech Type 1 Automatic and GraphTech Type 2 Automatic, placing the registration marks on the four corners. GraphTech Segment Area Type 1 and GraphTech Segment Area Type 2 places the registration marks on the four corners as well as the intermediate. When segmented registration marks Type 1 or 2 are chosen, the direction setting becomes active allowing us to set the registration marks to be in a horizontal or vertical direction. When this type of registration mark pattern is selected, step, which is the distance between each registration mark, will become active as well. In this case, using GraphTech Type 2 Automatic is the best choice since it is a smaller graphic. Units can be set to inches, millimeters, or centimeters. The other settings are used to change the shape and location of the registration marks. For instance, when placing the registration marks, there is generally a margin or distance between the cut path and the registration marks. This distance can be adjusted by this margin value. Increasing the value moves the registration marks further from the main graphic. Decreasing the value brings the registration marks closer to the main design. Note that the software limits the value to 0.59 inches. In a moment, we'll discuss another option that can bring the registration marks closer to the design. Both the thickness and length values increase the thickness and length of the registration marks. It is best to increase these values for longer prints or for prints that have been laminated. In either case, increasing these values provides better opportunity for the marks to be located by the registration mark scanner. Also note that when removing an individual sheet from the printer, leave at least one inch distance between the edges of the media to the registration marks. A line document with registration marks aligns the registration marks with the document's origin. Reset simply resets the values back to their original values. Finally, click OK to place the registration marks. There is another option that will allow the registration marks to be placed where we would like. Let's draw a rectangle large enough to surround the design, but close enough so there is not wasted space. Let's open Cutting Master 2's registration mark window again. Notice this checkbox setting, Convert Rectangle. When enabled, it uses the four corners of the selected rectangle for placing the registration marks. This feature allows registration marks to be placed as close as possible to the design. When using this feature, just make sure the registration marks are not over the cut path, nor the design. Let's click OK. The rectangle is then converted to registration marks, using each corner of the rectangle as the point of the registration marks. As a note, when converting a rectangle, 
The rectangle has to be selected in order to use the Convert Rectangle option. When placing the registration marks using this method, make sure there is at least a 1 inch distance between the registration marks and the edges of the sheet. The design is ready for printing, but first we have to disable the cut layer so that it does not print with the design. When loading the print onto the FC2250, orienting and aligning the sheet is somewhat critical. If wrong, the cut path will be off. The best way to load the sheet is to first determine how it should be oriented on the flatbed. For loading the media, if the FC2250 were to be overlaid here, this is how it would look. This provides an idea of how the media is to be oriented on the flatbed cutter. Notice too the red and blue arrows here. They relate to the arrows in this little icon of the FC2250 here. Thus the right edge here will be toward the bottom of the bed as indicated by the red and blue arrows. Once the printed media is loaded correctly, using the arrow keys on the FC2250 control panel, position the tool within the first registration mark nearest to the control panel. Switch to the condition you plan to use. In Cutting Master 2, click on the Layers tab and turn off the print layer. This prevents print objects from being sent to the cutter. Click on the Advanced tab. Cutting Master 2 will automatically detect the registration marks within the drawing, therefore it displays the registration mark option at the bottom of the Advanced tab page. Here is where multiple copies of the cut job can be configured. Since there is only need for one copy, we can leave everything as is. Once the Cutting Master 2 options are set, click Send. When the job starts, the FC2250 sensor will start searching for the first mark. Once it finds it, it will continue to find the other registration marks automatically. Once all the marks are found, it will start to cut the media following the adjusted cut path. In the lesson on conditions, we learned how condition presets can be assigned to each layer. To demonstrate how this can be helpful in the print and cut process, we have a packaging design that requires two different tools, the creasing tool and the cutting tool. In this design, we have separated the object into three different layers, the print layer, the cut layer, and the crease layer. The registration marks have been placed, and the printed media has been printed and loaded on the cutter. Let's send this job to Cutting Master 2. And click on the Layers tab. Let's disable the print layer. We can then assign the chipboard crease preset to the crease layer, and assign the chipboard cut preset to the cut layer. These presets were previously created and are not supplied with Cutting Master 2. If you need help on how to create condition presets, review the lesson on using Cutting Master 2. What's really convenient here is once the job is sent, the only step we have to do is move the active tool to the first registration mark, click Send, and the whole job is processed automatically, both with the creasing and then the cutting.